Good morning. Good morning. A few technical difficulties this morning, but she'll figure it out. Oh, I'm going to pay for that one. <laughs> welcome to worship this morning, everyone. To our Savior Lutheran Church in Nokomis, a welcome to members, a special welcome to visitors, and of course, those of you viewing us in our YouTube channel. Welcome. Friendly reminder, please silence your cell phones. Also a reminder, the church council meeting is this Tuesday for all council members, September 19th at 1 o'clock p.m. And I also have a very important call committee update. Your call committee last Wednesday interviewed a candidate for pastor of our Savior Lutheran Church. They came to the conclusion that this person, in their words, is the appropriate candidate for becoming our next pastor. The next step is for the consul to interview this candidate according to the Synod's transition guidelines. This interview will be conducted tomorrow. And if the consul comes to the same conclusion, your congregation president and treasurer will begin discussing a compensation package with this person. Following these conversations with the primary candidate and assuming that the compensation talks go well, your council will meet this coming Tuesday and vote whether or not to recommend to the congregation the primary candidate for call as our congregation's new pastor. So good news, things are moving along quicker than what I think I ever anticipated. So we should all be, be pleased. And I realize that it's a lot to digest at this time a lot of things going on, uh, especially with the call committee. And uh, I want to remind everyone that the call committee and consul is still sworn to confidentiality as to the name of the candidate until the consul's vote on Tuesday. I promise that I will send out an update to all as soon as the final decision is made, along with the next steps that will be happening in this process. Also per chapter 10 paragraph 3 of our Constitution, today I am calling a special congregational meeting for October the 1st. Consider this the first of two required worship service announcements in regards to that October 1st special uh, congregation meeting. I will be sending out further details of this meeting this coming Tuesday. It'll be held immediately after the service on October 1st, so please plan to attend. It's, it will be a very important meeting, and again, you'll be receiving details either via email or via mail. And the sermon will be short. <laughs> that was a lot. Any other announcements? Now it's time to sit back and prepare your hearts and minds for Christ Jesus as we listen to our prelude, Simple Gifts.
Bobby, how do you manage always to pick some of my favorite music? That song is, uh, was written by the Shaker community that was mostly upstate New York. And they were sort of a um, fringe group of the Quakers. Uh, and the last I heard, there were two members left in the group. So, but they, they're just an incredible people and uh, their music was wonderful. Okay, we'll start now with the confession. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. I got a page ahead of myself. Let's <laughs> go back to you. I was so excited by the music. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation. Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what you have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our day of rest, we wish the rest. Of 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. morning. The first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 50. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. The psalm we're reading today responsibly is Psalm 103. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For 
as far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion. The second reading today is from Romans, chapter 14. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, who do you despise your brother or sister? For you, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of 
the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. The word gospel in the or gospel in English comes from the Greek word evangelion, and it means very simply good news. And the first rule of Bible study for any Lutheran is to ask, what is the good news in this passage? And when I ask that of this morning's gospel, my answer is not a lot. <laughs> It's not what I want to hear. None of God's grace and love and mercy are shown here. All we have in this passage is law and threats. You must forgive others, law. God will forgive you if you forgive others, threats. This is an easy passage for us to think about. Forgiveness is something we all love to think about and talk about as long as it means someone else forgiving us. But when it deals with us forgiving others, then it's a lot harder to talk about. Today's gospel simply frustrates me and I think others as well by confronting us with our offense and then telling us, to change. And I don't hear that as good news. What does it mean to forgive someone? It's hard to find an example of genuine forgiveness. Really the only completely true example of full forgiveness I can think of is God. God extravagantly forgives humanity. It's endless rebellion, and God sends us a savior in spite of our sin. This is the greatest story. It's been told through countless generations, and frankly, it takes a thousand pages of very small print to tell the whole story. People have read and heard this one story for centuries. But you know what? It doesn't count here. God forgives, forgives people. So what? 
I mean, there's there's this wonderful old French uh, proverb that says, God forgives. That's his business. God is in the forgiveness business. In a sense, we accept that proverb. We accept the validity of it. God is supposed to forgive. God's doing what God does. God's forgiveness doesn't seem like a real example to us to follow. I mean, it's okay for God to forgive, but God is God and we are not. So where do we look for a real example of people, real people forgiving other real people for real offenses? The first reading this morning from the book of Genesis is the tail end of the story of Joseph. Um, it, it's a wonderful story and I'm going to bore you by going through the basics of it again. Joseph is one of 12 brothers. He's the favorite of the father and the other 11 are not happy with that. And unfortunately, the father also does things that make it known that Joseph is the favorite son. One day, the father has the finest coat in the land made for his son Joseph. Um, that, that great uh, British theologian, Andrew Lloyd Webber, <laughs> described it as the amazing technicolor dream coat. And the story is amazingly true to the scripture. Um, Joseph wore that coat with great pride, and every time his brothers saw it, they got angrier. And so finally, the brothers one day find their opportunity, and they strip the coat off Joseph, sell him into slavery to Egyptian slavers, and then they put blood on the coat and take it back to their father and said, our poor, poor brother who we love so much died and here is his coat as proof of it. It's a wonderful story. And you know the rest of it too. Joseph goes off into Egypt and because of his ability to read signs and seasons, Joseph advances through the ranks of slaves and is eventually put in the Pharaoh's household. And there he is put in charge of the Egyptian home defense program for food. Again, I made that up, but that pretty much was exactly what he did. For seven years, there was an abundance of food. The crops grew wonderfully, the harvest was plentiful, and Joseph basically taxed all of Egypt to put that food in storage. And then came the time of famine. And for seven years, there was no food that grew. And during that time, Egypt had plenty of food. And people came from all over the Mideast to ask for food from Egypt. And Joseph was in charge of giving it. And one day, even from the land of Canaan, Joseph's brothers came and begged for food. And they had no idea who he was. Now, I'm not quite like Joseph. I'm pretty sure I would have had a lot of fun if I had been in Joseph's situation. But Joseph gives them the food. Joseph protects them. Joseph sends them back and tells them, bring your whole families here and you will live with me and I will take care of you. Years go on, the families are safe, they're living in Egypt, all is good, and the father dies. And the brothers realize, you know, Joseph might have only been nice to us because of dad. <laughs> And there's no reason for him to be nice now that dad's dead. So maybe we ought to tell another exaggeration. And so they go to Joseph and tell him that on his deathbed, dad 
begged you to continue to take care of us. Uh, Joseph didn't care if that was true or not. Joseph simply assured them, fear not, I will provide for you and your little ones. All of the times that I've been angry with people, even when I've had what I thought was a really good reason, I never had anything like the reason Joseph has to be angry with his brothers. But here is a real flesh and blood human who's able to forgive what seems unforgivable. Joseph forgave, and he wasn't in the forgiveness business like God. It's possible for real people to really forgive real offenses. So how do we go about forgiving? I'm going to suggest something you don't usually hear in a pulpit, but I'm going to suggest we start by asking, what's in it for me? In the gospel this morning, Jesus commands us to forgive one another, to forgive the offenses committed against us. Well, that sounds like a law, a lot of work to me. But Jesus doesn't just command us to forgive. He commands others to forgive us. It's when I am able to get beyond my pride and my, my precious ego to forgive someone else that they are be able to begin to understand what God's forgiveness is all about. And it's only when someone else gets beyond their pride and forgives my offense against them that I can understand God's love and forgiveness. It's only when we know this human forgiveness that we have the opportunity to appreciate all that God forgives us. If you or I alone were commanded to forgive, it would be an oppressive law. But here, all are commanded to forgive us as we forgive them. Not only can we, through that, come to appreciate God, but we can also come to love and respect one another. In fact, I think it's true that forgiveness can be the foundation of all human relationships. Amen. Thank you.
Please stand as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We pray for the church, Bless the missions and ministries of diverse congregations, that they uplift the good news of salvation in ways that can be understood. Merciful God, we pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and healing to rivers clogged with pollution. Enrich the soil for trees and plants Protect the crops needed to feed those who hunger. Merciful God, we pray for all who govern. Encourage those in positions of power to lead with empathy, practice forgiveness, and care for those who struggle. Merciful God, we pray for our neighbors who face illness of any kind, for those strained financially, for all living with chronic pain, mental illness, the disease of addiction, or otherwise afraid or in harm's way. Protect all who cry out to you for mercy, especially Beverly, Jerry, Susan, Carol, Lisa, Eddie, Carol, Don, John, Sharon, May, Robin, Marcy, Joanne, Elaine, Hannah, Mike, Lorraine, Mike, Kerry, Carol, Kathy, Mary Lou, Christine, June, and the Plant family. Merciful God, we pray for this congregation. Open our hearts to practice intentional invitation. Help us to forgive each other, practice patience, and choose welcome over judgment. Move us to care for those in our community seeking refuge and safety. Merciful God, we give thanks for all the saints who died in faith. Show us how to live faithfully, creatively, and lovingly in your church and world. Like Hildegard, the abbess of Bingen, whom we commemorate today. Merciful God, remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace among us.
us pray. God of all creation, you have made all you have made is good and your your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Serve the Lord.